Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, Adam Aaron effectively confirmed that AMC Short Squeeze live on air when he was discussing with Trey. In addition, BlackRock have actually added to their AMC position, and we've got a final few words from Gary Gensler. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But guys, before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 3,700 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell, because you guys are always the first to watch a new video as soon as it's released. So guys, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss another video just like this one. And just a quick one before I dive in with the key information, once you've signed up to Moomoo, be sure to follow me in the app. They've actually got a whole social network within the platform. So be sure to get those four free shares worth up to $3,350 using my link in the description below to Moomoo. And now I wanna dive straight in with the key information. So, Adam Aaron actually reiterated that 80% of our shares are owned by retail investors. And actually, to be specific, Adam Aaron actually said more than 80% of the AMC shares are held by retail investors. 80% was the figure in March. He said more than 80% today because he's not allowed to say the exact numbers because it's obviously over 100%. Now, this is really great for two main reasons. Reason one is that back in March, apes held 80% of the float. A lot of people were speculating that many apes paper-handed in June and July, and therefore people suspected that we owned much less than 80% of the float, maybe 70% or only 50%, and therefore there could be in no way any synthetic shares in issue because we just didn't own that much of the float. But Adam Aaron has now confirmed that not only do we own 80% of the float, but we now actually own more than 80% of the float. There's actually more apes than there was back in March, April and May, and now we own an even larger and even greater percentage of that float. Bearing in mind that the institutions currently own 144 million shares, which is 28.8% of the float. Therefore, we're already over 100%. Over 80% plus 28.8 is more than 100%. Now, obviously, you are going to have naturally some more than 100% because obviously there's going to be some shares on loan that have been loaned out and effectively sold twice. Once the original purchaser and then a short seller has come in and shorted those shares and sold them to somebody else. But obviously, from the vote count on the Say Technologies platform, we know that there are billions of synthetic shares in issue. We managed to accumulate and vote over 10% of the actual float from only a slight smidge over 1% of the apes. This gave us an average of just over 1,000 shares per apes, and even using an 80-20 distribution model, and even a 96% and 4% distribution model, and even completely disregarding the 96% and only using the 4%, it still gave you over 1, 1.5 billion shares in issue. Now, some of you might say, well, why is he not allowed to say the exact number of shares in issue if it's over 100%? Why can't he just come out and tell everyone the sheer amount of synthetic shares that are out there? Don't forget, it's obviously against the SEC rules for somebody like Adam Aaron or any representative of AMC to disclose information about an ongoing investigation. I think on top of that, there's also additional SEC laws that Adam Aaron can't break. If he suspects there's over 100% of the shares currently an issue, and if he suspects there to be synthetic shares, I think he has to go directly to the SEC and ask for an investigation, rather than just tweeting about it and exposing it to the public. So not only has Adam Aaron dispersed any of the doubts over apes still owning 80% of the float, or potentially more or less, but he's also done one better and gave us a little hint towards the short squeeze. Leave for now. You know, this is actually a, a, a question that I have in, in specific regard to offerings and such. So as we know, there's a legally binding statement that Adam Aaron's made along with his company that they will not ask for any more shares in 2021. They won't issue any more shares in 2021. But I think- we, Well, wait, wait, wait. Theor I, it's true that we uh, aren't gonna ask for any more authorizations. Technically, we could issue 46,000 shares. 46,000, right. <laughs> but I don't think 46,000 right. shares is going to change our fortunes all that much. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, uh, I yeah. think uh, based yet, on the anyway. daily volume. We'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> so hopefully you did catch that. Adam Aaron said he doesn't think that 46,000 shares will change AMC's fortunes all that much. Yet. Basically saying when AMC squeezes and each share is worth $500,000 per share, then 46,000 shares at that point will massively change AMC's fortunes and his own as well. So I think even the big dog, the big silverback gorilla, Adam Aaron himself, is silently confident about the AMC short squeeze. I personally also love this freeze frame of Trey's face. The video is a little dark because it's ended, but Trey absolutely caught what Adam Aaron said there, and he absolutely agrees. 
I personally can't wait for that AMC short squeeze and I too am silently confident that it's going to happen. But who else is silently confident? Well, none other than the big dog BlackRock. They actually just increased their shareholding by 11.5% from 27 million shares up to 30.482 million shares. Guys, I think you really need to grasp how absolutely monumental it is that BlackRock haven't yet sold their shares. 30 million shares at one point when AMC was around $72 a share would have been worth over $2 billion. Yes, I guess to some extent $2 billion is fairly small fry to BlackRock who manage over $9 trillion in assets. But I think you also have to realise just how much BlackRock would have been up on their AMC investment when it was at $72 a share, not only in percentage terms, but also in dollar terms too. A $2 billion return for BlackRock would have been a brilliant investment. They could have just sold off AMC and diversified into other larger positions like Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Netflix or anything else, but they chose not to, they chose to hold all of their shares. Clearly they think AMC is going to go higher than $72 a share. If they didn't think it was going to go higher, they would have sold off their entire position or even just sold off a portion of their position and reallocated their holdings. You also have to realise that that 30 million shares that BlackRock holds is separate from their tracker funds, their iShares funds and their BlackRock Advantage small cap core funds. Because some people might say that well BlackRock can't sell those shares because it's trapped in their Russell 2000 tracker, they just have to keep the same percentage. But that 30.4 million shares here is held outside of their Russell 2000 trackers in BlackRock's personal holdings. Therefore, they could have sold this 30 million shares at any time because it's not part of any of their ETFs. But again, they chose not to. They chose to hold their shares and weather the storm. Finally, we also have a new tweet from Gary Gensler. The high concentration of retail orders rooted to a small number of wholesalers raises questions about market structure. Does this segmentation and related sector concentration best promote fair, orderly and efficient markets? Watch my testimony before the House Committee on Financial Services. Now I think I have played this testimony to you before but I'm going to replay it today in case anyone missed it. And I also want to highlight the significance that Gary Gensler has gone out of his way to tweet this again on the 11th of August himself from his personal account. Currently a significant amount of retail orders are routed to a small number of wholesalers. I detail this more in the written testimony but I think it raises questions about whether the market structure best promotes fair, orderly and efficient markets. Evolving market technologies, along with this payment for order flow, has also led to increasing market concentration, which we've found, history and economics show, concentration can lead to fragility in markets, deter healthy competition, and limit innovation. I think it's very important to highlight which specific points of that testimony he picked out to tweet separately. He picked out payment for order flow, and he picked out those non-ATSs like Citadel Connect, and virtue. Clearly he thinks that routing a significant amount of retail order flow through Citadel Connect is not fair or efficient for the markets. Hopefully this is what Gary Gensler is focusing all of his time on at the moment and hopefully we should see in the coming days, the coming weeks and the coming months some change. Guys if you haven't already be sure to check out the links down in the description below to my new AMC related merch and also to the Patreon and the private Discord. There you can have some place to chat, get urgent updates about AMC and be in with a chance of winning $600 on the 28th of August. And as always guys if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.